My name's John Whitcomb, I'm Executive Head Teacher of the Westlands Academies Trust. I'm Andrew Carter, Head Teacher South Farnham School in Farnham, Surrey. At the beginning of the process, consultation was you didn't have to do it. I don't think they really meant that. You have to be make sure that communication's good and that people are understanding. We wrote to all of our parents, we invited viewpoints that come back and we, we had not a single negative response. The secret with any consultation is tell the plain, unvarnished truth. We always would consult with parents anything of this sort of major nature. Invite the parents in, talk to them. Some have views, think it's an awful idea, and they'll have an argument amongst themselves or a debate. And the same with staff. He's been very open from the beginning. Uh, he, every single step of the way, he's uh, explained to us what each stage means. And in every staff meeting, we bring it up. He's also very keen for us to come forward. If we hear anything about academies, if we hear any information, he's always open to listening to us as well. We believe that we, we have the, uh, the, the support of the parent body in doing what we've done. Of course, it's entirely and utterly the Governor's decision. There were very clearly, uh, initially, certainly more cons than pros. Some of our Governors were anxious that this may, uh, may make a two-tier system of education. It's very hard initially to see what the educational advantages would be. What were the children going to see out of the change like this? It would appear that that was the way things were going with the, with the change of government and really to be one of the first schools to gain the status I think we worked extremely hard on doing it because it did it was important to us to, to do it and because the schools had literally just federated as well it was almost the next step and it just made everything a bit more concrete really and more secure for everybody. the gross gain would be around £140,000. Now, what you have to do then is buy back facilities that you're using from the authority with that. We may have £40,000 net at the end. Now, £40,000 is a lot of money, and I'm not decrying that, but in running a school terms, it wouldn't be enough to make a great change. We benefit by an extra £700,000. £700,000 could, could make a difference to the teaching and learning and make a visible difference to what the pupils, the parents and the teachers actually see at the Westland School. The challenges have been really quite odd, I guess, and things that we wouldn't necessarily have anticipated. Simple things like changing the bank account, ensuring that uh, payroll details are transferred from one account to another. I must admit, I did have uh, a number of sleepless moments worried that on the 25th of September, staff wouldn't be paid because this account wouldn't talk to this account, and uh, it all seems to have gone pretty well things like the pension situations, all of that stuff. The VAT, the maternity, the pre, all the personnel details. The non-teaching staff are on different arrangements from the teaching staff. We were anxious that we'd, we would be able to buy back and that wasn't absolutely sure to, to start mm. off with. Now we're working with the local education authority to see uh, what services they can provide for us in terms of us approaching them as a private organisation. One of the areas is the maintenance of school buildings, which is quite um, you know, a big thing, big, big thing, and uh, things can go wrong, you just don't know. At the moment, what we do is something called we buy into their joint collective, if you like, a sort of an arrangement. We all work together, we'll put the money in and you take it out. What we'll need to go is to private companies, or as I say, the authority may say, well, we'll make a private company that will deal with it. We have some quite old building stock here at Westlands that does require support. But one of the big advantages of the local authority is that it knew the school and it knew what was working and what wasn't and, you know, there was a capital programme that they would have in place. And of course the YPLA and the DFE haven't got that local knowledge and we still need to have that support. But there is going to have to be a capital programme that exists to support schools such as mine. <laughs>
they will then have a meeting which they will agree that the package looks reasonable, doable, affordable, etc. And then we'll sign the document and you, you name a day. But we're not there yet. We haven't said yes yet. <laughs> I haven't pressed the button yet. We're still going to make absolutely sure it's the right thing for us to do. Thank you.